Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So, just getting ready here. There we go. Hello there, no name. Rainbow Slash. Krishtoff. I think you'll be the uh, second Krishtoff that we've actually had joined the streams actually before. That's awesome. I uh, just finished my own stream, so it'd be nice to keep back and watch something else play. I didn't know you streamed, dude. Uh, you'll have to share one of your links in the uh, Discord. That'd be pretty awesome. Hello there. I know. How you doing, my friend? Yep, so... Obviously, the customary uh, few minutes. I always say minutes, more like seconds. Funny thing is, I've got a candle here and it's bloody blown out. That's irritating. You know when you have uh, those sort of things that you do? Just, I don't know. Somebody always has something uh, that they associate with doing a certain action. I do like to have a candle. I know that sounds rather interesting. But hey. It's nice. Until it's actually completely burnt out. Yeah, that's gone. <laughs> Hello there, guys. How are you doing? Ah, how are you doing there, Cola? Yeah, that's what I love to see. So we can see here he has named um, the save Laughing to the Bank. <laughs> oh, I swear to God. We do have some very interesting names. What did I name it? What did I call it now? Started to uh, forget that. We've had some interesting ones. You know, I honestly can't remember what I called it. Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what I actually called it. It might have been a bold gambit. Or, yeah, I think I called it the War God's Wake. I really like that title, actually. Yeah, candles are amazing. Right then, ready to go? How you doing there, Lupus? So, of course, we are playing now with the actual beta version of Gary Grisby's War in the Pacific, so version 26B, I do believe it is. Uh, quite a few improvements, so it would be nice actually to see if we can notice any of those. I do like the Japanese in EU form, they're really fun. I always have a soft spot for like Navarra, basically doing a new world escape Navarra is always good. Okay, so we finally occupied that island there, that's gonna be quite nice. Um, these bases over here, basically there's nobody there, so eventually we will have them uh, fall to us. Right, okay. Task Force 11 reacting. We are seeing our ASW reacting here to the submarines. Now, of course, our carriers were round about here. It will be rather interesting to see how the submarines move. I think what we are going to do is, obviously, as we uh, plotted our moves down this way. Uh, right, so we're unloading here at Savai, which is quite good. Uh, now, yeah, we didn't see any coastal defense guns there. <laughs> yeah. Right, what do we have here then? So we have a AM. Near miss rattles a submarine. Okay. Okay, so we've eluded the anti submarine warfare here, which is quite nice. The escort has abandoned the actual search there. The interesting thing is though, it is suggestion suggesting, sorry. There's only the Ballarat here. Though we do see the icon indicating multiple ships here. So I wouldn't be entirely surprised that there's something else here. We are aware that uh, there's a heavy cruiser here. At least it was of, as of last turn. Right. I'm mightily... Right, okay, yeah, he's definitely spread out his submarines here. It looks as though he's been trying to actually preempt where we're heading. Four allied ships, okay. Radio transmissions. By the Marsh Islands. That could be rather interesting. We, Okay, what have we found here? <sighs> Please? Please? Okay, just use your guns then. That's fine by me. How are you missing? Finally! Oh my lord. 
I ain't seen there. There are so many ways to torpedoes. But at least we'll finally have the kill here, so that's a nice way to start. Interestingly, we do note additional ships here and here. You are going all out, aren't you? Oh my god. I think she's dead. Right, so two shell hits and three torpedo hits. That was a lot of torpedoes fired there. She does go down, unsurprisingly so. I'm not too happy about that excessive use of torpedoes there. But we are seeing two distinct forces here. But we've actually sank one of his transport ships, so that's nice. At least we are still, well, actually uh, claiming some kills there. Okay, here we are at Vi. Yep, there's no coastal defense, so basically we have unloaded their additional resources. Okay, so still actual uh, mines at Hong Kong, but that's very good to know then. Yeah, changing, we definitely will have to. Okay. Right, one of our ships there did hit a mine. Sea Wolf. Now, the destroying minesweeper that did hit a mine, depending on the severity of her damage, I'd imagine she's probably been obliterated, to be honest. The issue with mine clearing is there's always going to be casualties at some point. Um, if you just message me, uh, just send me a private message and I'll post it. Ah, did we just have a hit there? Internal explosion, hello. Somebody himself suffers a severe damage there, was that? Right. So we are forced to abandon the search, but that was rather interesting. It did say something about severe damage. If somebody could just pause it when they see that message and actually let me know what it said in addition, that'd be fantastic. But we are inflicting damage in this area. Yeah, one ship, one torpedo. I know 63, what have we dis uh, discovered here? The Destroyer Pope. Now, this is rather interesting, because at the end of the day, you have to imagine that this is actually revealing valuable information. Now, is this ship actually entering the Coral Sea or leaving? Yeah, indeed, we actually are pulling off some hits here. The thing is, uh, what do we have? Right, so Task Force 133 has been refueled. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Task Force 288 has met, but cannot join the 27 combined ships. Okay. Uh, two allied ships there. Snoop by allied level bomber. Catalina. Right, I'd imagine he's aware of my carriers now. At least, um, I assume it's my carriers. Ah, uh, we do lose a Ki-48 there. Rather interesting, considering that um, that would have been flagged from the submarine. Right, reconnaissance. Yunagi is being shadowed. But she hasn't immediately been set upon, so she may yet survive. She does have AA defences. B-17 attacking. Hello there, Kersa. How are you doing, my man? Heavy damage to the engines. Well, that's fantastic. No, I was about to say, did I send the ki 27s here? But I didn't, actually. So he's going to continue to bomb them. That's fine by me. I'm looking forward to seeing how our sweep pulls off, actually. Right. Yep, we are seeing 44 Ki-21s over here. Hitting the war area headquarters. That's fine. I mean, this will help build that experience, which is always a good thing. I didn't, uh, well, anticipate any fighters, so that's fine. We should be okay here. Uh, 238 casualties inflicted there. An additional 18. Hello there, Batman. How are you doing, my friend? Okay, another 46 casualties. We should be able to just completely um, annihilate that force from bombers, to be honest. If it's actually not already been annihilated, I'm not seeing a unit here. It might have actually been destroyed, which would be really very handy. And I like bomber sighted over. Right, okay, so we do have to start running combat air patrol again. Though the interesting thing is, I don't know if he's actually aware of a second division arriving in the Philippines within the next day or two. 
Right, Kurushiro sinks. That's a shame. Kurushiro. Hmm. Oh, right, they destroy Minesweeper Sank. Okay. We did lose an additional uh, transport out from Midway, I think it was. Periscope near Wake. I think that was Wake. Sometimes it does go a little bit fast. We are seeing uh, submarines actually off the coast of uh, um, Sydney, by Sydney anyway. Submarine ship, sorry. Okay, airstrikes. Right, our sweet mission over here, but we do not actually find anything. Seems he's not actually running combat airborne, which is rather interesting. We just saw ships by Canton Island. Yeah, he's definitely making a play there. There's ships by Canton Island. Hello there, Paul. How you doing? That's going to be rather interesting. Now, uh, so we've already seen quite a lot here that is going to be uh, really, really quite intriguing. So he has ships by Canton Island. Now, if he does actually land forces there to retake Canton Island, then fair enough. I can't stop that due to the fact that I don't have any troops on the island. What we will do then is more than likely pull the actual uh, H6K4s back to probably Tarawa for the time being. We do already have a heavy cruiser and three destroyers on its way to Canton. We do also have uh, aircraft tender on, it, well, tender on its way to Canton. So if Canton does fall, we do have forces within the immediate area to retake it. But it would rather... I suppose it would be rather good for us, because at the end of the day it would actually destroy additional forces, right? We are seeing quite a large amount of uh, ships around Pearl Harbor. We've seen a lot happen here. Right deliberate attack, yeah, the two divisions. I feel glad that I didn't go for the shock attack. The 86 Chinese Corps is... Uh, it's not the most powerful, but it's still still there in strength. Yeah, it's forced to retreat. When does it retreat towards? Right, it retreats towards the city. Now, that's actually fantastic. That means that we'll be able to chase it down rather than splitting our divisions. Okay, fantastic. Defender, the terrain, leader. Apparently, their leader's okay. Morale and experience. Uh, so we suffer 374 casualties, we inflict 2,010 casualties, but note the fact that we are destroying a large amount of squads here, that's actually a very good result. Yeah, look at those non-combatants destroyed. Engineers destroyed, guns destroyed. How many guns did they actually have within that formation? Uh, 38 guns, yeah, they had absolutely nothing. They were attacked by 24,000 infantry, 206 guns, and 42 vehicles. Yeah, 831 assault vehicles, 272. So it's not the weakest force, it's still a decent force, but the thing is, they will be annihilated. Right, deliberate attack over here at Batangas. We can see here the 194th Tank Battalion, we see here the 71st, um, I'm going to assume that is Filipino. Now, this will be an interesting fight. It will actually cost us some men here, but I think we'll probably be able to drive them out in a turn or two, if not now. Oh, we do capture Batangas! Banzai! There we go. They're forced to retreat. Now, that is what we want. That's a very good result there. Very light casualties, actually. I was expecting higher. So, 289 casualties sustained. One squad destroyed. So, very light losses, actually. 23 squads disabled. But over the course of, like, what, the four, four units that we did have here, that's very light. Uh, 822 casualties inflicted. 64 squads destroyed. 5 disabled. 37 non-combatant destroyed. 3 disabled. 5 engineer squads destroyed. 17 guns lost, and 36 vehicles destroyed, 5 disabled. That is actually a really good result, something definitely better than what I was actually uh, imagining. So let's see here, then 108 vehicles, and they've lost 41 of them. Okay, that is beautiful. Uh, 58 guns, and they've lost 17 of them. Okay, that's beautiful. So obviously we did have almost a 2 to 1 advantage in guns. Um, now they've we actually might have something close to a force... Uh, it, well, what was it? Equilibrium in terms of vehicles. So not far off, but yeah, this is actually a very good result there. Uh, preparation and experience. Very good. Any heavy ships sunk? Ah, we did sink a transport ship. We did see one of our own destroyer minesweepers destroyed by a mine just outside of Hong Kong. But other than that, well, we did also see one of the uh, transport ships heading back from Midway sink at last. But that was to be expected. 
Okay, shock attack at Savai. I'd be shocked if we didn't actually take it this turn. There we go, Savai has fallen. The Samoa detachment has surrendered. Tenno, Haika, Banzai. We have ten times their number here. Oh, wow. We also destroy three Pipi Y5 Catalinas. That's actually quite a good result there. That's fantastic. So they were still on the island. Beautiful. So we had terrain leaders. Leaders plus leaders. Shock. Uh, sorry, minus preparation. Shock and leaders. So we do need to actually have a better leader here. But that's actually really good then. So we suffer 35 casualties and we inflict 236 ally casualties. We destroy the unit there. So the Samoa detachment has been destroyed. But I'm actually really happy about actually uh, destroying these PPYs. That's actually very nice for us out here in the Pacific. It's not going to slow him down too much, but it's actually uh, taken away some of his capacity to actually f gather information. Uh, Allied Bombardment at Mersing. Right, we actually get a good look at what he has here. So he's the 22nd Australian Brigade, the 27th, the 6th Indian, and the 15th Indian. So he does have the forces to take Mersing should he wish to at this point in time. Yeah, he definitely has the forces to do so, um, I'd imagine. But the thing is, Mersing has gone on days longer than uh, really either as is, well would have expected obviously not what I would have hoped for but neither is what um I don't know, it's neither what he would have hoped for which is quite good but the fact is he has at least 15,000 troops in this area now so we know there's 330 assault value so we could actually make hell for these men Mersing is actually not connected to the rail system so it's going to take them a couple days to actually march out from here now, we are, of course, making progress down Malaya. It may be, if we're very lucky, we might be able to delay him further, and perhaps we might even be able to cut him off in the end. But this is very good. We need to hold on here if we can do. Right. Remember, if you have battle lords of 3 to 1, you'll most likely take the base. Yep. That was a good thing there, really. Okay, Hong Kong has expanded its fortifications to size 2. Right, we have a lot of allied movement here, a hell of a lot of allied movement. The good news is, uh, Savai has fallen. Now, Canton is under direct threat, we know that one. We don't know what it has, well, what is in the area, but I don't imagine it wouldn't be something uh, insignificant. Now, it would be rather interesting to see exactly what it is, because we may actually be able to challenge it using just the heavy cruiser and three destroyers. We do have additional forces within the area, so we could actually route... Uh, within the sink, well, within the day, and arrive probably within two days with uh, two heavy cruisers and well, six destroyers. So first of all, we'll take a look over here the situation in the Pacific. Okay, now the really good news is that the actual cruiser mine layers did actually survive. That is fantastic. Uh, we do have a submarine just off the coast here. Hello there, Justin. How you doing, my man? So we do still have our submarine here. We do spot two ships now. I find that rather interesting. They're heading northeast. The ships have survived, and that is the absolute most important thing. I'm really happy about that. So what we can do here then is we have captured. Uh, well, we do have a little bit of supply on the island. What is the status of I? Right, the port is operational. The airfield is completely and utterly operational. Fantastic. Um, our troops are still in a good state here. We see. Yep, the numbers are roughly the same in uh, Fiji. Right. Could this be... Four heavy cruisers, supposedly. Now that is interesting. Hello, Veremia, how you doing, my friend? That is interesting. Hmm. Kiributai has just arrived as well. Right, there's a lot of fuel that's been used here. Okay, we need to replenish from the port. Actually, we'll replenish it seeing that should draw it from the ships here as well. Now, we are unloading fuel as well, so that's fantastic. You've just arrived here in time. Uh, we are unloading additional supplies. We have 6,000 supplies here at the moment. We're definitely need to up that. Uh, we do have the two light cruisers over here as well, and the three destroyers. Right. Submarine tender over here. Additional submarine VRO 68 is that. Okay. But the good news is the tender has um, completed its job. 
I do wonder where it is. It's over here. Okay, Ondo. Now, Ondo is extremely low in endurance. It seems she's used almost all of her fuel. In fact, practically all of it. Um, yeah, so there's AA immersing. Yeah, as we'd imagine. Those units will have it built in as well. Hmm. Okay. But the good news is we have arrived in the area. So what we're going to do here is we're going to quickly save it. I'm just going to see what happens. So just remember uh, 47. So we'll call this turn uh, 16 part 1. We need to get fuel in Kidibutai. We need to also reorganize Kidibutai. Now the interesting thing is we do have those landed forces on the way here towards, um, let's see, towards Baker Island. This is extremely, extremely close. We do have two cruiser forces in Vieri here. Uh, of course, we do have the battleships only, I'd say, perhaps a day out, two days out from Canton. This is interesting. Now, I think we are probably still good to go here for the Elise Islands. Now... Let's take a look. The thing that um, I find interesting is the fact that um, I could potentially send them to Tarawa VG Freeze, but I don't know if I'd be able to actually use the torpedoes. I doubt I would, which is a limiting factor. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, combat force then. So what we're going to do here then is just saved it. What I'd like to see is, uh, well, we can see here the amount of operational points is not very great. So we'll replace from C. Okay, as you can see here, it's not actually taking uh, fuel from the port, which is obviously what we want. Now, we'll put you back to uh, mission speed. I think this is something I should have done, like, a uh, previous stream is actually turn the speed from full to mission, and they would have had more than... Okay. Uh, send the H6Ks out with torpedoes to hit the heavy cruisers. Well, what I'm going to do is have the um, H6Ks actually deployed to Tarawa. The thing is, I don't know if he has any landing forces here. We are aware that there's uh, at least four heavy cruisers. Though four heavy cruisers could be rather interesting. It could be a very nebulous result there. Now, we were aware of two light cruisers here. We were aware of a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. We're also aware of the fact that uh, they didn't actually deem to attack at Sir uh, Savai. Which is interesting. Very interesting. I do wonder about Pago Pago. Because the amazing thing here is um, if he has a very light garrison at Pago Pago, we might even be able to jump from Savai to Gurab at Pago Pago. Now that's actually worth 100 victory points as well, which would be really quite nice. We also will have additional submarines in this area. Now, submarine I-15 is equipped with a E-14Y1 uh, search plane. She's somewhat damaged here. Look at those system. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it, they're really quite heavily damaged, I know. Is, uh, it's not the best. They will have time to rest in the future. They absolutely will. Okay. But not now. What we need to do then is get the fuel in here. Jakuma's actually carrying up quite a lot, isn't she? So we need the fuel in here. So we'll replenish here from the port. Right. We have put some additional fuel in here then. That's good to see. If. If. <laughs> Hello there, Sam. How you doing, my friend? Uh, welcome to stream. I think it's the first time I've actually seen you in here. Uh, if he has, there were landing ships in the area and they didn't land on Savai. Well, this is what I wonder. It's like, would he have landed on Savai in the first place, though? He doesn't necessarily have to. They might have landed on Pago Pago. Well, that's it. But we do actually have a search plane over here, so what we will do then is run reconnaissance of Pago Pago. I'm loving this so far. We have a very live theatre here. This is a very active theatre. We also did detect radio transmissions out here in the north of the Marshall Islands. We do see destroyers, patrol craft, two light cruisers, two destroyers. Destroyer, sorry, light cruiser and three tankers. Very interesting. They might have landed on Pago Pago. Opera ops are operational losses, so fuel got spilled. Okay, that's no good. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm not too bad, actually. Not too bad. Thank you for asking. Right, we are picking up the fuel from over here, so we are up to 891 units of fuel. We are also unloading fuel over here, then, at Tarawa. Right, unloading fuel. 
uh, are currently only 80 units of fuel then. Our uh, London forces have arrived over here. We also then do have Nagato and Mutsu, as well as Aoben and Kinugusa. So the thing is, uh, should he want to um, tangle with his other surface, we do have the means to defeat him. It would be a hard-fought battle, but with the actual supported battleships, we would outgun him. We would actually have at least matching numbers of heavy cruisers within at least two to three days of Canton. Of course, I don't want to just have a surface battle. The thing is, this is going to potentially accelerate our timetable, and I'm not particularly pleased with that. We do have somebody who's actually heading down to that area. So I suppose the question is going to come down to, uh, do we blow... Well, do we do we uh, go off half-cocked? Because I don't think it would be for the best. We may dispatch some forces, but if we dispatch forces in part, then uh, we don't have our force in collective, our force... Uh, Magnified, I suppose you could say. Hmm. <laughs> That's good to know, my man. Okay, so we have actually completed the loading of the 144th uh, Infantry Regiment. Fantastic. Right, we are starting to load supply aboard here. I'm not going to allow that. We do not need to take supply from here. I mean, I do have that supply. But I'd rather have supply actually brought there and accounted for rather than taking way too much here. More than we'd ever need. Right, loading has been completed. Fantastic. So that's actually good for me. So we do have 4,212 troops there in addition, which is good news. Uh, we do have an additional, yeah, 214 units of fuel coming. We should have another oiler on its way as well. Yeah, destroy my sweepers and an oiler, so that's an additional 2,463 units of fuel. Now, what I could potentially do here, then, is we might have a oiler sent from uh, the Marsh Islands to truck. I could even take the uh, Hayamoto and actually have it uh, start loading up a truck, which would probably be the best idea. She's only a day out. She'll arrive within the day, and then we'd be able to begin immediately loading. Now, hmm. Is it bad that I really want to see an area from your perspective, but I cannot tell you from what it is or where? <laughs> Um, nah, that's not bad. I mean, this is it. We do have an agreement, obviously, not to look at anything. Right, so we can see here, I4, I10, 15, 17, 18, 21, 22, 25, 1, 2, 1, 1, 5, 3, 1, 5, 4, 1, 6, 4, 1, 6, 5. Okay, 1, 6, 4 is leave the patrol zone to replenish. Uh, Hiroshima, okay, we'll have to find that. Right. Could not completely unload troops at San Fernando. Well, we are packing here. <laughs> uh, 292 cannot completely unload as well. Four allied ships at 124. Radio transmissions near Tanogi. Or Tana Taongi. Hmm. Refueling here. Right, two days remaining. Right, then let's take a look. So G4M1 battery reports suspected somebody near Kamran Bay. Two allied ships near Kagoshima. Interesting. They may very well be submarines. One allied level bomber near Kualajun Island. Yeah. No, it's a shame about that fuel being wasted, but I didn't want to draw all of that fuel from the actual island. Of course, we are repla uh, replacing it, but I wanted to draw it from the ships and then from the actual island. It's not the best way, but it does mean that we actually get fuel in the um, in the ships. I mean, this is it. It's not good for us to waste any fuel, but um, the situation is actually evolving here at the moment. Uh, timetables are definitely being accelerated at the moment, and I do find his actions to be rather interesting. I don't think he would be going north without reason. So I do find that extremely telling. Okay. So KI-48 okay, was actually destroyed by the flag. Uh, Allied reconnaissance over early Sina. Right. Float plane sighted over Canton Island. He's definitely looking at Canton Island. I'd imagine we could expect a um, 
land in Venet Canton potentially. Opposite operational points, yeah. It'd not be until next turn that we could even set off. I mean, we could set off, but yeah. Right, Yunagi sinks at sea. Okay, that's unsurprising considering the sheer amount of damage to her. It's a shame I would have loved to have saved her. Had I known survive would have been uh, taken this turn, we might have been able to save her there, but we weren't to know. Okay, oil slick at 133. So he does have submarines in the area. Spotted by the D3A1. I imagine he's actually been uh, shadowing us with submarines. Right. <laughs> I mean, if he could hit uh, Japan from Alaska, I think he'd be doing really well. Okay. Hmm. So we are transporting supplies to Tarawa. Low star. Hagikaze has been repaired at Saigon and returned to service. Right, so we're loading resources to Port Arthur and Kijo. So we capture Patangas and we capture Savai. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, there we go, Lupus. Look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at this, guys. So we can see here, Akagi takes A6720 replenishment, uh, replacement, sorry. That may be where all these supplies had gone then. That would make sense. Very interesting. So we have taken some A6M20 replacements, some B5 and 2 Kates. Oh, fantastic. We do see some of our divisions upgrading. Very nice. Yeah, the looking back reported to been sunk. Nice. Well, I'm happy about that. We can see some additional planes return to the pool here. Okay, let's actually take a look at our numbers then. Cargo. So we do have uh, two zeros here. It's going to take two days to bring them back up. Yeah, I know, right? I didn't expect to see us actually taking replacements right now, so that's actually very, very good news. <laughs> Yeah, this is fantastic. If we're actually taking replacements now, I didn't expect us to be taking replacements until uh, tomorrow, to be honest. And because the air headquarters is near, yeah, it's on the actual island, which is fantastic then. Uh, so we can see an additional two zeros here. Uh, another two B5 and two Kates here. Brings us back up to 27. No additional vowels. I think that's going to be full. Uh, we do have an additional four zeros here in a Kargi. Two days until they're ready. Uh, none additional here, because I think that's a full-size squadron. Uh, one additional B5 and two Kate. Right, I do have some in reserve here on Hero. I think what I need to do is actually, uh, we'll send them back to the pool, actually. So send you back to the pool. Now, we should actually gain those as replacements. I wish I'd seen that before, otherwise we would have had additional zeros in these squadrons. Right, another B5 and two Kate here. Another, yeah, that's, uh, sorry, actually another two zeros there. Right, additional, uh, B5 and two Kates. Now, I do have some in the reserve. Is it worthwhile? Um, I'd say so. For the Kates, anyway, due to the fact that we have them in decent numbers. Okay, that's extremely interesting. So we can see here two additional, three additional, obviously that's our reserves. No. Okay, how have we gone in terms of rearmament? Right, we still have some engine damage over here. I don't know if we could uh, fix that. So, Hiru, she's definitely uh, lacking some aircraft, but we'll have... Yeah, we'll have our extra numbers within two days, so obviously we'll still have time to replace uh, other losses, which is quite good. Akagi. Yeah, let the B5N2 in uh, reserve. Yeah, that's it, because we have 30 of them in the pool. Right, so Akagi still hasn't rearmed her torpedoes. She does have some damage over here. It may be really worth our time to have her stay here and just try and repair. She's definitely suffered uh, quite a bit of damage there. If I was to take her out from uh, Kiributai, how long could we be looking at? 
I mean, all of them need some attention, definitely. We can't really afford to use full speed, at least for, for a long time, anyway. Um, can't dock, unfortunately. But we will disband the actual task force just so I can see what we could do in terms of repairing her. Right. So she was stood down, we could obviously see that. If I was to place her on critical, we could see 17 days for that damage to be repaired. Um, I think we'd be able to repair that damage. Hmm. It's a very interesting... Very interesting. It has reduced the speed of Akagi down to 29 knots. The thing is, uh, we could potentially still go to battle. We may still have to. I think what we're going to do here then is... Uh, I'll probably take some of the carriers that are much better off and actually still have them on station. Because we do need to secure this area. I cannot afford to have the yeah, port hit in our carriers in there. Uh, nor can I afford uh, forces to come out here and raid us. We need to be somewhat uh, careful now. I'd imagine he will know that Kiributai is here, or at least in this area. So we do have some interesting challenges remaining. We do have patrol boats here, which we can definitely use. Um, hmm. Right. So she will miss the op if you fix her. I mean, this is it. It's like, if we have her remaining ports... Well, this is it. It depends, really. If we take a look again, then. So I'm going to put her back into the actual force here. So transfer Akagi back in here. Uh, these other carriers, because they are on station, they won't uh, repair. Now, Karga has become the new flagship here. Hmm. We do have... the uh, auxiliary repair ship, Akashi. So she's going to aid in repairs here, which is why we're seeing a quicker turnaround. I mean, we could obviously have her sent to truck... But uh, that is a couple of days out. It's a much larger port and she does have a uh, repair dock. We can obviously repair the damage here. It's just a matter of days, really. It would be fantastic if we could uh, find additional auxiliaries. Hmm. I think what we'll do then... I mean, this is something that's going to be quite an interesting challenge. We can see here that Karga... It's only really a Kagi where the damage is actually too great. Zuikaku is still operational. I do worry about Akagi due to the fact that uh, she is smoking here, which could draw activity. Potentially. <sighs> She'd be out of action. If we have her stood down, obviously it would uh, hasten the repairs, but we do not have that time. Though... Neither do we lack time. We do have something. We do have a small amount of time. Hmm. Right. We'll have to really think about this one and really decide on what we're going to do here. We do have forces that we could actually dispatch to potentially challenge the Americans in this area. It all really relies upon what he's going to do. The uh, beauty here is we do have advanced information. Which I'd be very keen to uh, build that up. Of course, we're going to have to cancel the landing at Baker Island. It's way too dangerous close. I could continue the landing over here. Now, we do have two heavy cruisers as well as six destroyers in the immediate area. That could challenge this force. But the fact is, there's six ships here. And they are moving west. Severe storms in the area. Now. Hmm. So, Tarawa. What range am I looking at here? 21 hexes. 19 hexes. 18 hexes. So, if I was to move the G3M2 nails over here, we would have the potential to bomb ships out of this range, so beyond Baker Island. It may be worth our time then, potentially, uh, even if we can't use the G3M2 nails with torpedoes, it may be worth our time to have them transferred to Tarawa. 
and have them on naval attack using bombs. They would then potentially be able to harass the enemy, potentially even score some hits, if we drew them towards Baker Island. It's a very interesting challenge that we do have here. But the fact is, he's left Savai to be occupied. He wouldn't do this without reason. If he could take this, but feared the north... Yeah. If he feared the north, he would have taken Savai. Or at least done something at Savai. But this really does indicate confidence. I doubt his reinforcing Baker. I honestly feel like he may be attempted to take Con uh, Canton Island back. I really feel that's going to happen. Uh, so at worst here, we'd have to leave behind two H6K4s. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can see here that it would be two days. These aircraft are pretty fatigued. But we could have them obviously um, land over here at Tarawa. And they could actually attack over here. But it would always be better to use them on uh, a naval search role. Uh, you have to predict that he's going to predict your predictions and counter them. Yeah, pretty much. You have to play 4D chess. So in the immediate area, we do have I-171. Now, she isn't equipped with a search plane. I was about to say she is, but I'm not that lucky. Neither is 172. So we have 172. We also do have 170 here coming from the north. Okay. What we could do here is we could put our submarines onto full speed potentially to actually make up some of this distance. We do obviously have uh, four heavy cruisers, at least six destroyers in the actual cover force. You have six destroyers. I could send additional forces from Kidabutai. We do have additional uh, cruisers as well that we could potentially send this way. We do have other reinforcements coming too, which is always good. Uh, the aircraft tender is a day away. Well, about. Yeah, I'd say a day away from Tarawa. So we'll have you head to Tarawa. Now, my worry here is Tarawa. I'm quite worried about her. What I'm thinking here potentially is a dangerous move. But what I'm thinking here is potentially we leave Akagi behind for the time being. We have possibly Kiributai move south towards Tarawa. And this is only a uh, theory. I might not actually commit this, so don't worry about it. But what I'm feeling is potentially we have our carriers move south, at least some of the carriers. Maybe five, maybe six, it depends on how we're feeling. I'd be probably more likely to go with all of them rather than one of them or two of them or three of them or four or five. I think uh, we need to travel together or we will be picked off apart. But what I'm feeling is potentially have the carriers near Tarawa because I feel he definitely has something going on here. I'd love to know what else there is there. Now, heavy cruisers. We can definitely handle heavy cruisers. Don't get me wrong, they're still going to be dangerous ships, but it's nothing like aircraft. We can do something about that from a distance. We don't necessarily have to engage him. The thing is, as well, it could be potentially destroyers. Now, if that's destroyers, that actually does make the situation significantly easier. Though, the thing that we do have to consider here is potentially he is using these... Uh, cruisers as a fast transport i.e. he's actually using them to transport troops which could happen he could of course actually be running towards Baker Island and using that as an outpost we don't know these things there's going to be a lot of uh, theory done here hello there player how do my friend welcome to the stream well this is it I mean the storms are something he can't always predict the weather prediction though clear skies in this area which is fantastic for aircraft. That's really handy for us. If the weather prediction is right and we do see here majority clear skies, that will definitely help us. We do also see the second force down here to the south, which is only made up of two ships, which is something I do find very interesting. Now, that could have potentially been forces dropping off at Pago. They're moving northeast. He's definitely moving on the north. Now, Lupus, you remember when I said to you about uh, my bet? Regarding THG moving to the north, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, there's a motor gunboat and destroyers. Okay, we did actually do uh, quite nice over here. Yep, and the Brunei Express is a day away from Brunei. Well, from Miri. 
So we'll land our forces here, which is good. What I'm going to do is probably have the escort carriers uh, separated into another force so they can actually run uh, cover. I say hit those uh, heavy cruisers near Canton with your H6Ks. Well, the H6Ks over at Canton can't use torpedoes due to the fact that they're out of range. But we can still use bombs. Now, what is their armament? Yeah, he would more than likely have APDs around here. We are seeing some big movements. Now, I would love to try and hit these tankers. They're moving to the west, which is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, this is it. It's just trying to figure out what your opponent's thinking. Possibly dropping off a Pagobigo. Right, we aren't seeing any activity over here for the time being. <sighs> right, somebody's still operating in this area as we had imagined. Now our division is just a day away, which is fantastic. Um, I might consider actually running them at full speed just to make sure they land, but they're going to land here no matter what. We are seeing 106 armoured fighting vehicles here. Now, it did say they retreated towards Manila, which I find rather intriguing. See, I'd, I'd be... Um, I'm half tempted to drop here, but the thing is, I imagine these troops are in uh, strategic mode, not combat. What mode are they in? Right, strategic. Yeah, so we can't drop them there. It would have been nice, obviously, that would have been a very nice uh, way to announce our landers, but probably wouldn't have been uh, good for us. We see a tanker here, actually. That's good. We, uh, but better safe than sorry. If them heading northeast makes sense if they were returned to the US. Potentially so. Right. <laughs> I'm glad you do. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look over here then. So we do have a 33rd division. Are you ready to go yet? There's 96 troops over here. I think we can begin to march. And we can begin to unload these troops over here. So begin to unload the additional tanks now. But, uh, yeah. Just a couple elements of engineers and... Let's see, what elements is there remaining of the 33rd? Um, a couple hundred troops, actually. Hmm. He's probably shipping out of Manila. Yeah. He knows the jig is uh, coming to an end over here. Uh, we do have forces over here, so the Camilla Detachment is uh, good. They can actually... I think what we'll do is have the Camilla Detachment as well as the Mayura Detachment once it arrives advance upon Mauban. They should be able to handle that situation. They do have numbers. They also do have AT guns. Probably not the best, but the artillery does make up for that. Yes, and then we'll see the Mayura Detachment uh, that will head north. They'll be out there in a day, or potentially two days, but they will head north. We also do have the SNLF. They're marching to take this base. I'm probably better off just moving up here, to be honest. Yeah, I'm just going to cancel that. I know it's been a waste of time, to be honest, but uh, we'll move north. Right, the roads would lead here. Yeah, those subs are everywhere. But you know what? I'm really happy. I know it sounds really um, self-defeating, but I'm really happy he's using his submarines elsewhere. I'd much, much rather suffer potential submarines attack, uh, well, submarine attack elsewhere than in the economic area of Japan. Because every single day when unmolested here is going to be worth a ridiculous amount of us. It means that we have um, unmolested uh, convoys, which means that we gain every single... I'm not even kidding. Every single ton of resource does matter getting to Japan. Uh, yeah, we did bomb <laughs> poorly on day one. Um, <laughs> it's because we accidentally did have one of it. Yeah, I'd accidentally hit Iba, uh, which is a shame. But we did manage to uh, nail three submarines over there, which was something. Okay. Right. We are definitely lacking uh, supply over here. We are eating that shit up. Need more. No wonder there's a lot more troops have just arrived here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Georgetown. Right, progress to Georgetown is going to take some time, of course. Hmm. 
So we did lose a Minesweeper off here, which is a shame. But they're performing their duties, so eventually we'll be able to clear the um, minefield from Hong Kong, which would be great. Uh, also expanded the airfield there, which is very nice. More like he has ships out to match full. Right. <laughs> yeah, well this is it. It's like, I think if I was to play a future play by email game, I'd probably either hit Manila or even hit Singapore. I think hitting Singapore could be a rather interesting challenge. I can see why hitting Manila is really good, because at the end of the day, uh, submarines are more damaging to the uh, Japanese economy than... Uh, American battleships. A battleship you can see and you can hit. And it can't really hide. Okay. So we do have additional forces over here, then that's good to see. Right. -o. Hmm. <laughs> okay. We aren't seeing anything else here. We know there are ships in this area. We did see a destroyer passing here. Now, what do we have here? A light cruiser moving west. Those look to be ships. I think either ships or, to or, uh, or submarines, actually. But we are seeing ships here, so at least we can actually head towards them. And ideally, actually, inflict some blows there. But these submarines are gathering vital information for us. Right. Hmm. We need information. First and foremost, we need information. So the question comes down to, at Survive, what do we have here? Of course, we lack any aviation support, so that uh, is rather difficult. Have you considered making a uh, sub-blockade around San, Fran well, San Francisco? We currently do have our submarines running these sea lanes here. Whether that's going to start working out yet, we're not entirely sure. We need more information. Uh, but we are patrolling that area. Oops. He may not be simply moving too much. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like landing in Palambang and Mersing without in real danger. Yeah, it'd be incredible. So there, Slash, how you doing, my friend? Uh, we haven't had too much else happen, really. We're just going over the actual potential possibilities here. Now... I'm actually considering, do we move the Yokohama KUT to... I'm half... I'm, like, I would consider maybe moving a force down here to survive of um, flying bows. The reason being, yeah, they can actually survive without a... Runway. Well, an airfield. Uh, since we've unloaded all supplies here, so we are lacking here in terms of supply. I'll have them on rest and training, then ideally we don't lose as much. So the supply situation here isn't amazing. Tanawa, 827 supplies. We definitely need additional supply here ASAP. Right fuel here. Strange. I have you here. Right, okay, that's going to work out. What we'll do then is we'll take the submarine tender. This one here. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you to actually unload your cargo. So what we'll do then is we'll unload the cargo here at Talawa. We do have supplies being flown in, but uh, at least we'll have additional supplies here. Pull that task force that survived back to truck or... yeah. Are we talking about the actual cruiser mine layers, etc? They are lacking on fuel, however. Hmm. Having some seaplanes in that area, even if they were to be lost, would be worthwhile, I'd think, just for that reconnaissance information. Okay, you're on your way back. With additional supply, which is obviously what we need. Right, we aren't seeing anything at the moment around Midway. But we are aware of his activity. I do have an additional aircraft here. Uh, one day for another 14 for the other. 
Right, additional supply coming in. Um, if we had the ability to load mines, potentially, but I think you need to load mines at a uh, higher level port. But having the cruiser mine lines actually survives rather important. They're not, uh, in, well, they're not terribly combat capable, but they do have some armaments, and they're actually quite viable. So potentially one day if we were to uh, secure Fiji, they could be put to some very good use. Hmm. What I'm feeling here at the moment is, let's take a look at what we have in the area. So I do have a capability, yeah, fuel's definitely a premium here at the moment. Yeah, we've taken a lot of fuel from these other ships here. Now this tanker, yeah, you've had your fuel taken as well, but you are unloading an additional 4,936 units of fuel. So we do have that going for us. We are unloading here as well, so that's 5,000 supply and 300 units of fuel. I think fuel is definitely becoming a difficult situation here at the moment. So thank God we had uh, fuel being sent here already. Otherwise we would have been in a uh, rather interesting situation. I do have an additional 22,000 tons of supply here. I might have that rerouted to the Marshall Islands. Now, to the north, we did have the replenishment arrive back in Japan. So we do have an option here. We could have them uh, fueled back up and sent back out towards the Marsh Islands, which would alleviate our issues, or just across the Pacific, really. Hmm... Right. I'm assuming it would damage the trans uh, troop transports to come into shore. Oh yeah, if you have mines, they can obliterate ships. Here's an idea for when the American fleet is damaged. Sure. See you soon, Dan Lupus. Well, this is it. They'll probably head to uh, Pearl Harbor. Oh right, gas. I mean, we could have submarines loaded with mines. But it's a very... Um it's one of those if you can only load so many mines in the actual torpedo tubes. Uh, we actually do have two cruiser mine layers at Canton. Yep, uh, cruiser mine layer. So we have two of them, which is nice. Now this is why I like them, due to the fact they do have... I mean, they have no armor, but they actually have uh, twin 15 centimeter guns. As well as a deck gun, it seems. As well as some AA. So they are capable of battle. Very limited battle. They could potentially fight off uh, transports, maybe. Or at least cause some issues if they weren't escorted. Hmm. Right. You need to head back. So you're going to head back to Tarawa. I mean, I could have you head back to Tarawa, or I could have you actually head over here to, like, Ocean Island, or Naru, or Naru. But... 21 resources. 101 resources here. That's a lot of resources, to be honest. I just don't think it's worthwhile at the moment sending additional troops out. Could do, but we'll see. Right. You're making mission speed here at the moment. I could have you run uh, full speed, but I don't think we really gain anything on that. Yeah, three is what we're heading here anyway. So there's no way we can actually speed that up at all. But taking full of full would be nice to have additional reconnaissance in the area. Hmm. So we have two tenders on their way. We also have a destroyer tender on its way to Tarawa. Additional four patrol boats. Hmm. I'm thinking you can try and mine then possible land spawns. Right, the AMC and the transport Yokohama. A little bit of extra fuel. Okay. We do have a tanker here with some very 
light amount of fuel. Right, I think what we're going to do here is we'll have the Hayamoto, or Hayamoto, actually head over here to truck. You can actually uh, load up 8,000 units of fuel. Not take too terribly long, due to the fact that truck is a larger port. So an additional 8,000 units of fuel to actually then be able to move down would be pretty fantastic. Now let's take a look at our signal intelligence. Colombo. 2948. Here. Hmm. So something's up over here. And this is where we knew the... Well, this is where the British light carrier actually starts over here at Ceylon. Right. It goes on sale every now and then. It's good on sale. Like 20 quid zero, so like pretty awesome. We're unloading over here. Oh, do they actually make it then? Awesome. Yeah, they did 20 second reconnaissance. Fantastic. It's just an issue now that uh, 20 seconds actually spread out here. Well, 18th, sorry, spread out. Uh, so a lot of stars in Gora. 9-7, obviously these troops are still uh, unloading. Uh, so we need to head to a, a low star. But we'll then be able to reform the 18th division. Which will obviously multiply our force here, definitely. Uh, which units make up the 18th division? I need to hold them back, really. Uh, 114th regiment. Okay, you can definitely stay. 55th and 56th. Yep, you're already here. Fantastic. Wow, you do have a lot of fatigue. Okay. Rest and training. Same for you. We're also looking for the... 12th Engineer Regiment. Mountain guns over here, Singora. Move to a low star. Hmm. <laughs> it's like fine wine. I like that. I'll keep you in that area. Right. Need to move the 22nd then. Oh, you're actually already in uh, strategic mode, that's fantastic. We might be looking at maybe a day or two to unload them. Hmm. Oh, it's not that bad. Don't worry about it. It's one of those where you've really got to dive into play. Okay. Let's take a look at the operations report again. Task Force uh, 1 has been spotted. 132115. Right, he knows we're here. Okay, so um, let's take this into consideration then. He knows Kitabuta is here. He knows that. So that's rather intriguing then. Is that going to. Um, speed his plans, or is it going to uh, slow them? What's in Singapore? From what we can see, two ships here. But I doubt that. I imagine there's a lot more there. 106 fighters, 42 bombers. He's definitely built up his fighters here. 
Oh, Roar is not bad. Like, I find Aurora quite easy. It's just remembering really hard to do stuff. The hardest thing about Aurora is merely just the UI. I really do love Aurora. Can't wait for the new version. Hmm. We didn't see air activity here. He's definitely building up his numbers of fighters here, which is interesting. Well, not here at Johoru, but uh, Singapore. Near 20,000 men now. That's rather ambitious. He's drawing men away from Johoburu. Uh, he is signaling to me the fact that he's going to attack here at Ma Sing next turn. Right, we cannot detach him to move in. They'll be there in about three days, I'd imagine. Two to three, uh, about three days, I guess. Right, how many engineers do we have here? So we have here then 132 engineers, 8 vehicles, which is actually pretty good for the Japanese. Now, I could build an airfield there, but I don't think it's worthwhile. We are building fortifications, however. 3,000 men here, give or take. Hmm... It does look like he's actually uh, checking out Manila, which is fantastic. I'm really happy about that. I don't give a damn if there's like near 80 odd thousand troops here. I do not give a damn. The troops at Clark I could beat. I mean, the thing is, we do have... Uh, you take a look at these numbers, but the thing is, it's like the 33rd Division alone is what? I mean, let's take a look. How many men do we have here? So, so far over here, we do have... Uh, 7,394 infantry, 9,942, so that's, what, 17,000 men? Obviously with tanks to be unloaded. And then we'll have an additional 15,000 men over here. And then we'll be able to reform a third division. So in the Philippines, we'll have three divisions plus additional forces. And if necessary, we could bring additional air forces into the area. Hmm. Right now, China... We did win a victory over here, which I'm glad about. Um. <laughs> right, our forces have moved up. Fantastic. Now this is going to be great, because what we have to do now is we have to advance around. We must move to the south to Kaifeng. This is actually pointed out. I can't remember who it was who pointed out, but it was actually a really fantastic thing there. And something I actually was missing, just because it's actually uh, a little bit hard to see it on the UI. But we would have been potentially walking into a uh, shock attack. So. We've actually uh, got something that we can use on him now. Because we'll march south towards Kaifeng. The terrain's clear, which is great. And then we'll march from Kaifeng across the river here. Across this road to the rear of Chengchao. Where we'll be able to deal with his 125,000 troops with significantly more ease. Which is good news. 64,000 tons of resources. We're beginning to load here as well. Okay. Uh, tankers over here. Okay. Hmm. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the Yokohama KUT-2. And I know it's not for the best due to that that they'll probably die down there. But I'm going to have them transfer to Savai. Now I hope that a few of them actually do make it to Savai. Okay, so four of them make it to Savai. That's what I need. Right, so looking at Canton, I was really confused then for a moment. Right, four of them have made it to Savai. What I'm going to do is actually set 20% uh, rest here as well. But the good news is now we do have... Within this radius, the search potential, the potential to actually gather information, which is extremely important. The fact is, 
even just having three planes over here, it may potentially spot anything in this area. We don't know, but it's it's better than having nothing. But the fact is, we now have aircraft here. Uh, so where are the USN Naval... Well, where's the US Naval... Ah, uh, oh, goddammit. US Navy's uh, carriers. Well, we don't know. I do feel that probably is. something's coming. Something is coming. I don't think he would be bold enough to actually um, knowingly head towards the Marshall Islands. Hello, Van Loopers. Welcome back. So what I've done, Van Loopers, is I've transferred four of the H6K4s down here. I've put it to 80-20 so that at least there's some rest here due to the high levels of fatigue. But we're trying to, I mean, this does it. I'd rather sacrifice these float planes if it does reveal any information in the area that could be of use. The Fiji operation, we were planning to wait until the 30th of December, so this is rather interesting. And that things are actually escalating here. Right. Now, what we'll do then is have our submarines routed to the area. So what is your strategic and operational goal for the next few days in Canton and Fiji region, considering those uh, cruisers showed? See, that's what's interesting, isn't it? Due to the fact that these cruisers showing up, that is escalating things. But in reality, no, it's not going to escalate things. We are still going to remain here. Hello there, Shannon, how you doing? So we have uh, captured Survive. Survive has fallen. Though rather interesting, though sadly we did lose the Yanagi out here at sea. She did die, unfortunately. Though Savai has fallen, he did not actually choose to attack our forces here, which meant we did manage to unload some additional supplies. I've transferred uh, four H6K4s down here. Though we are seeing a American task force here of at least four heavy cruisers potentially, which is rather intriguing. There's six ships in there. Now the thing is that what makes me wonder is I don't think he is the carriers because at the end of the day I don't think he would be uh, I don't think he'd be mad enough to risk carriers with such a small escort force. He knows I have submarines in abundance in this area. So uh, I don't think it would be that bold. So what I can surmise here is that these are more than likely surface ships. Yeah, it's not escalating. If he comes close to Kiribati with those cruisers, he will regret it, absolutely. And also, Shannon, you'll be super happy about this. We have drained the island of fuel and supply for the time being, but Kiribati is actually... Well, she's she's in rough shape. Akagi's a little bit rough. She's uh, running a little bit smug there, so she definitely does need some time to repair. But what I'm thinking here is, um, as a potential option, is we have Kaga, Hiru, Soru, Shokaku, and Zuikaku. They could, if needed, be a uh, solid fourth. I will have a Kagi. I think I'll have a Kagi. Uh, uh, this is it. Uh, the carriers that really need the attention are Shokaku, Zuikaku, and a Kagi. Kaga, well, Kaga, Hiru, and Soru could spend a couple days out there. I mean, Shokaku, uh, she could probably do it. I mean, even Zuikaku could do it. We could probably manage it with uh, the rest of the carriers rather than Akagi. And Akagi's got some damage there that is painful, but it could be fixed. The thing is, though, it has lowered her top speed. Uh, so she's down to 28 knots along with Karga. Yeah. Well, this is it. Um, I'm worried about having them sit here like sitting ducks. So I think what we might do is actually uh, transfer. Now, this is an actual potential thing here. Yeah, split with Kido Botai. <laughs> Not again. What I'm thinking here, though, is uh, we take advantage of the fact that uh, we can obviously take A6 and two zeros off the carriers. So what I'm feeling here, and I think this is probably going to be the best option, it's going to be the option that alleviates my anxiety as well as everybody else's anxiety, as well as giving us a solid air defense, is we potentially take one, maybe two, maybe three zero squadrons off of the carriers. We could have them based here or potentially around the area, but probably here. The good news is then we could then run combat air patrol and uh, the carriers would be able to remain in station. Well, they'd be able to remain in port. Sadly, they can't dock. Uh, but we'd be able to run combat air patrol. I might take one squadron. Maybe two. I'm thinking probably more towards one. Yeah, they are a beehive which you do not want to poke. <laughs> well, this is it. Well, we have the fuel. We do have fuel being unloaded as well. Uh, we have fueled up. I mean, Kidabutai has... Uh, well, that's a carrier aircraft. Um, I wonder. What we'll do here, then, is actually load up the save. 
So this is... Where did I save it? Right, say 47. We'll take a look at 47. I'm in full screen, aren't I? Right, save over that. Yes. Right, so we're going to load up uh, turn 47 in the actual tracker. So just hold on then a moment, guys. Let it just switch. There we go. Take 47. Uh, what is a good amount of planes that will sink one ship? Well, the thing is, it depends what it's getting hit by. I mean, one bomb could kill a ship. It depends really if you are lucky. But the fact is, uh, the difference between American carrier doctrine and Japanese carrier doctrine is that the American carrier doctrine favours dive bombers. Now, the SPD-3 Dauntlesses I believe he will be using will have a range of about uh, seven, 7 to 8 hexes at absolute most. Well, as we use the B5 and 2 Ks. So the thing is, he could drop a thousand pounds of bomb, but the thing is, a torpedo is uh, significantly more deadly, or can be significantly more deadly. A bomb can cause fires, but a torpedo obviously causes flooding. Now, flooding is a very dangerous one. Yeah, we're not going to split Kiributai. When I said take an A squadron out, I meant like basically um, have them taken off the carriers and plant to the airfield rather than taking Kiributai out. Yeah. Hmm. I think what we'll do then is, um, I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I might have some, I might have um, a Kagi taken out, but remain in port as well as the others remain in port. But have a Kagi taken out so that she can actually undergo some repairs. I mean, even a day's worth of repairs might be worthwhile. It definitely depends on how things go. Right then, so we're going to read the current turn here. Okay. Uh, for Japanese CVs, even those bombs are dangerous. Oh yeah, absolutely. We can definitely die to being burnt up. Those thousand pound bombs can be just as deadly. Yeah. <laughs> it really is interesting. Okay, so these are the... Um, Patrol boats have a bit, well, the uh, transports that were converted, and we are producing a uh, lot of patrol boats. Uh, destroy tenders. I forget what the Miroto is. But that might be AG. Some additional ones over here. Okay, so Yanagi was sunk there. Uh, I don't know if we'll admit that loss. I'd rather, I'd rather him not know about it, to be honest. Yeah, true. But this is it, the B5 N2 gates do have that additional range. Our real ace is the fact of the A6720s. Their spectacular range is incredible. And the beautiful thing would be, um, I'd love to try and sweep an enemy carrier. At least try and take down some of his actual combat air patrol. But uh, it's one of those things, if you take fighters away from your own forces, you are leaving them somewhat, uh, well, without cover. Yeah, the US uh, Navy does have the damage control advantage. So, the thing is, we if we take him down, we have to, have to take him down. Right, Rushing and Fusan are uh, lacking supplies here. Fusan, Fusan. Is Fusan in Korea, or where's Fusan? Fusan rings a bell. Is that Japan? It could be. Well, it's Japan, isn't it? No, that's Korea. Okay, right, we are lacking supplies then in Korea. Interesting. Okay. So we did lose uh, DMS, uh, d sorry, the Destroy, Mind, uh, Destroy Minesweeper W13 uh, to a mine just off Hong Kong. Yeah, I mean, that's it. The thing is, we have... Uh, we'll take a look at the actual numbers shortly. Right, I don't know about Skipjack and Seawolf being sunk. I'd love if that was true, but I don't believe it is. Reach destination... New pilots have arrived yet. One kill. Stationed at Kotaburu. Um, yep, yeah, arrived at Ubon. Nakhon. Nakhon. Blah, blah, blah. 
Seven files get IQ'd as reinforcement. Naval Construction Battalion on uh, Pact. Okay. Let's take a look at the industry. Mm hmm. Wasn't that previously 8,000? Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, you got to imagine, like, uh, sea mines are rather deadly. I mean, this is it. You might not always be able to spot them. So they have bloody dangerous things. Hmm. Right. Will you put the A5M4s on the carriers now? Well, this is it. I don't think we'll be able to produce that many A6M20s. Uh, I did have three in reserve. I've actually sent them back into the pool. So we'll be able to put at least five additional A6M20s. Um, other than that, I don't think we'll be able to fit any additional ones in. But it really depends on our time scale. You know, I did forget about the A5M4s. The A5M4s can definitely run combat air patrol. They're not fucking great at it, but at least it's something in the air. Right, so let's take a look at actual uh, regional resources. So Japan... Right, okay, so we weren't able to keep it up this turn, but we have seen supplies increase again. Now, of course, we will have... Uh, this is obviously due to the fact that our convoys have headed back to obviously uh, load up again. But you take a look over here, so 4.758. Obviously, still not as low as we were at turn 12. I think turn 12 is the lowest we reached. Yeah, lowest we reached was uh, 4.5 million tons. We're back up to 4.7 million tons. Obviously, we were down from a high of 4.8 million tons. But you imagine this is over the course of three, sorry, four turns where we did see a surplus, even though we're still using. Okay. Uh, yeah, occupational risk. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at aircraft production. Now, once the squadron gets replacements, it has to wait seven days until it gets new replacements. Okay. Well, that's fine, then. The fact is, well, it's happened today, which is fine by me, because obviously we're expecting uh, zeros um, at least a little bit later, at least a day later. So this is actually fantastic. Or even a couple days later. I was honestly expecting maybe about three days, but for them to have arrived early is fantastic. It does mean that uh, two days we'll have those additional planes ready. I mean, this is it. We do have, obviously, the uh, P5N2 Kates, which is great. Building those numbers back up. Right, so if we take a look at the build rate, uh, zeros 2.223, 1.97 here. Right, uh, six of these Oscars in the pool. Obviously, we did have all of our zeros just used here. Yeah, we took six of them out of the pool. Yep, so we had six of them in turn 16, then into turn 17, we had only zero. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> the good news is it seems like we are building back up our K-43s, which is fantastic. It's not going to be long until we can really start getting that going. So once we do have a squadron's worth of k 43 cs we'll actually uh, convert another K-27 squadron more than likely, which will mean additional fully combat-capable aircraft, which is beautiful. Right, engine production. <laughs> Look at the supplies in the bases where the industry is repairing. If all the bases meet supply requirement to 20k, yeah. Well, this is it. We need that. Um, actually, going back. Oh, not to the game, though. Um, I meant to the tracker. One sec. Let's take a look then. So, task forces. <laughs> Hmm. So he's showing some very light detection level here. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. You don't want to invest in something uh, for mine sweeping that could... Well, that's worth a lot. They're basically like destroyer lights or... Like bigger patrol boats. Well, actually, they're just, they're just glorified patrol boats, aren't they? Or all, all well, no, actually, I'm wrong on that one. They're basically like uh, a lot of them would probably be old uh, destroyers that are still handy. Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much for that, Dead Mosh. That's really nice of you, man. Well, this is it. I'm still learning one in Pacific myself as well, so this is fantastic to have people who aid me. I mean, Lupus is fantastic. I mean, uh, Major Problems is fantastic. We do have Blackstar. She's also fantastic. We have a lot of really good people in the community. And of course, we do have people coming and joining in each day, which is fantastic. Right. Okay. So you can see the aircraft aboard here. We can see the damage to the actual squadrons. Well, sorry, to the actual ships. We can see here 359 out of 448, apparently. Hmm. You know, it might actually be worthwhile reviewing our commanders here. At least the captains. That could be worth reviewing. And we do have Nagumo over here. We have Yamaguchi. Taman Yamaguchi leading Kidobutai and Nagumo leading baby Kidobutai. Ah, that's awesome. No name. <laughs> okay. Are these forces actually ready? Yeah. Well, I wasn't thinking... Um, let's go back over here. I wasn't thinking of replacing uh, Yamaguchi. Rather, the actual individual captain, uh, captains, perhaps. Air 69 is still good. 74. That's actually really impressive. Though, Soru's commander, Soru's pilot, well, yeah, uh, Soru's captain is actually uh, not very good, yeah. I mean, 36 air is not good enough. That is, well, that's half or less than that of the others. So that is pretty bad. Having good naval skill helps dodge. We're not going to replace Yamaguchi, don't worry. We're not replacing him. That's uh, Yanagita Muto? Yanagita Moto? Ryuka Saku. <laughs> I don't worry about it, man. Hmm. Okay. But I feel that we could replace him considering that he's actually a fairly poor captain. At least for the carriers. He's, he's a good naval commander, but he's not quite good enough to be a uh, carrier commander. So we do have some other options, though not quite stellar. They're still pretty good. <laughs> so we have Yabe. Uh, you're on the side, you're already assigned here. Obayashi. 52 naval, 65 I think uh, that 52 naval's decent. We do have 70 naval down here. But the thing is, of course, 38. We'll take a look at the other commanders. Yeah. The naval skill is good, but we could have somebody who's um, a little bit lesser of a naval commander. Maybe even more than the air. Well, potentially so. But we could go with somebody who is significantly better as an air commander. Drop about, what, 10 in naval skills? I think I could do that. I mean, double our air. Right. Oh, okay. Shokaku. Hmm. Zuokaku has a good captain. Akagi. Yeah, good captain. Yeah, possibly so. 
Right, so, so far, we're looking at uh, possibly replacing the captains of Shokaku and Soru. Yeah, what I'm thinking here is we actually try and balance it out. I think we'll balance it out then. But I'll have the better commander place on board Shokaku, as she's the more modern and uh, larger carrier. Okay, so 65, uh, 50, sorry, 52 naval, 56, 62. I may take uh, Yokoi. I mean, let's take a look at naval commanders. Yeah, the thing is they are lacking the air command. We're gonna have some fantastic naval commanders. But they're not particularly amazing when it actually comes to the uh, air command. So I'd like to go with somebody who's about um, in between. I think that's probably for the best. Yoi Koi. Yeah, we'll stick with something like that. We'll do the same for the other... Was it Solru? I mean, he's still a formidable captain. He would be very nice elsewhere. Right. Yokai. Or Yokoi. So 62 air and 58, sorry, uh, 56 naval. So Yokoi. Aggression's pretty good too at 60. Right, it's going to cost us 7 political points, but we'll do that. He is best qualified to command a carrier. He's also well suited to command a service combat ship. Uh, Yokoi. Toshiyuki. He's known to be a promising and aggressive officer. Yep. There we go. So we have Yokoi. Toshiyuki. Now we'll replace the commander of Soru. Those ones to die will leave and those willing to live will die. <laughs> hmm. Right then. So we're looking for somebody who's more balanced as well. 5261. Hmm. Well, what I'm looking at here then is either Yabe. Or I could have uh Kura Kura Kubo. Kura Kubo. We could have Kura Kubo as a potential second commander, or second choice. He has slightly higher naval skill, but he's not as skilled in the air. But it's only a difference of four points where that difference of two points at naval may be worthwhile. As obviously that does come to the general control of the ship. Would be losing four in air command and gaining uh, two in naval, but it would obviously bring them to a more, well, to a, to a uh, equilibrium, I suppose, of naval and air command. What do you guys think then? Are we looking at uh, Yabe or Kurakubo? Kurakubo. Love that name. Yeah, good service captains, few good carrier captains, definitely. Hmm. I'll send him to the uh, Kidik Butai. <laughs> yeah, check the commanders of Baby Kidik Butai. Might be able to sack some good ones and put them in. Uh... Good do. Ryujo. 3268. Sixty-four fifty-eight. He's a good captain. Katsuki. Okay, we'll have Katsuki command Soru. But obviously I can't take them out right now. It would obviously be in the future. 53, 56. It's fairly balanced. 43, 53. Okay, so we'll go with um, our options at the moment and then we'll have um, changed out. 
or could potentially do it should she change, well, head into port. But for the time being, we'll have them changed. Uh, yeah, I do believe that these are obviously uh, real people. Right, sorry. You're a good captain, you will come in use later. So what do we think then? Do we go with a uh, slightly higher naval command or we go with slightly higher air command? It's one of those really, isn't it? It's not a massive difference in either, but uh, we'll see. I suppose for survivability of the ship is probably what we want to be looking towards. But is it a worthwhile difference of two points or is it worth more to us to hold on to additional, uh, what, three points? Sorry. Um... No, we lose four points in the air, don't we? Okay. I'll let you guys uh, chat amongst yourselves, see what you think. I am kind of leaning towards maybe additional naval. Yeah, carries more important than planes. If everybody's happy with that, I think we'll take, uh... Yeah, I think we'll take, uh, Kurukubo. Look at the aggression. If the naval and air are the same, look to aggression decide. So we have... Kurukubo. 59 aggression. Yabe 53. So, yeah, that comes down to Kurukubo. He's a fairly aggressive commander as well. Okay. Promising and careful officer, yet he's a more aggressive. Interesting. Right, there we go. So we have a change in command in Kidibutai. So ideally we'll see actual... Uh, I mean, Soldo did take some losses here. Which is a shame. Okay. So yes, we do have some options now. We could take aboard Kidibutai additional A5M4s. That could be done. What I'd like to do is actually have the float planes changed out if I can do. If possible, that would be amazing. Interesting, we are seeing the Jank B over here. Yeah, I think it's definitely the better. Uh, no great possible. Right, we need that. Supply. I would like to have them upgrade. Ah, oh, still have uh, no name. Have a good, uh, good one. Okay, replacements are delayed. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh... Well, we won't be drawing any additional supply into the carriers then, so we'll be able to build that supply back up. I'm rather surprised they were able to pull it off, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, having Kiributai with Jake's only would be amazing. It would obviously give us additional range, because these bad boys have such a big advantage. I mean, they have more than twice the range here. Of the, uh, what are these, the Peets? They have, um, not far off, I'd say, what, like, psh, not far off twice the range of the E1K4s, I think. Yeah, this period, definitely. Okay, that's everybody there set to change to Jake's. Yeah, I mean, you take a look at that range there at 10, that's amazing. As we want to see. I will set the float planes to actually have some uh, 
rest by them. Actually, no, they are set to 20% rest, so they should do that. Yeah. Well, if he keeps the carries alive, we'll be happy. Right, let's take a look at Tamon Yamaguchi then. So, 55 naval, 76 air. Of course, he's not commanding the ships directly and 61 aggression. But having 76 air command is really quite good. I think we have... Uh, let's take a look. So, fighters. So, we're now up to 85 zeros, which is good. Uh, so, we're up there by an additional 5 zeros. Hmm. Actually, that does intrigue me because we did have some in reserve on one of the squadrons. Is it too late for me to retain them? I guess it is too late. Right. Yeah, well, that's it. Hmm. So if we take a look over here then. Uh, dive bombers. 129. So we didn't take on any additional D3A1 vowels. Torpedo bombers. 147. Yeah, so we've taken on an additional 5 here, at least. That's good news. 3 in reserve. 4 not ready. Did we actually take uh, some additional float planes as well? That's cool. Nice. Right then. You desperately do need fuel. Just like where to actually get it from. Can't really do it right now. Yeah, possibly. I mean, we can take a look at Kiributai, actually, and uh, consider that. The thing is, the uh, um, big distance, really, the time it would take for those new pilots to arrive. Okay, fairly good here. Yeah. Right, no stinkers. Um, experience has been lacking here to a degree. I might have the zeros run training then while they're here. Experience is overall very, very good. The thing is, we do have some very good commanders in some of these squadrons as well. Hmm. Fatigue is lowering, which is good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, now right. Get the pilots and let them try in a bit before you get the replacement planes, I think. Well, this is it. It might be worthwhile doing. I mean, what we could potentially do then here is knock off the combat air patrol. I could knock this down to 50% train. Um... Hmm. Are we missing pilots in the Kiribu Tai squadrons? We'll quickly check. 18, 18, 18, 18, 21, 18. Additional pilots there. Uh, 12, 18, 9. And we have 8 planes with 2 ready, so we do need an additional pilot here. <laughs> right. I do have Matsunuga. He's our best over here. But I'm not going to actually have you aside. The reason for that is you are there to train squadrons. Though... Would take you possibly years. It's just a day to arrive. It might take you longer. So you have 12 missions flown. 10, 12. So you've had no missions currently flown, but you are very, very good. Yeah, 74. Defense is 69, 77. Okay, he might be the superior fighter then. Uh, considering air is 76, experience is 79. Yeah, he's definitely... Oyama is a better pilot. He has less experience. His naval bomb is better. Naval torpedo is better to Matsunuga. Naval search is better for Oyama. Reconnaissance is advantage to Matsunuga. 
ASW to Matsunuga, transport to Matsunuga, ground bombing to Oyama. Uh, Oyama and Matsunuga are, well, mashed here. Low ground attack is Matsunuga, definitely. Strafe is Matsunuga, but defense is definitely Oyama. And I think Oyama, with that air and defense, I think that is definitely the superior pilot here. So we'll take Oyama into Kitabutai. Or Yama will be here in three days. So that'll take us up to ten pilots. Right, we need additional pilots here. So currently we have nine, so we only need two more. Okay. Back to the reserve. I might take a look at Sultan by defense, actually. 77, 17. 16, 75. Yeah. Right, 76, 71, 75. We'll take Hirata. Hirata. Six days. <laughs> oh, yeah, is a mad lad. <laughs> 75, 72. We'll take you. Though we do have a 77 here. Okay. I do like that. Really good defense. I think that's really handy. Because obviously that will uh, improve their survivability. And I think survivability on a fighter panel is extremely good. Because at the end of the day, that does allow them to actually uh, go on to become potentially acers. And increase their experience. Well, they might be really very good. But if they die in the first battle, well, that doesn't matter. Hmm. Okay. Kamihira. Matsumoto. Right, well, that's an actual additional one, but that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Okay, looking good there. I think we'll have some training while we're here, then. I think that'd be a very good thing to do. So what we'll do then is we'll go down to, um, I'd say, 30% of the squadron rest. The rest of the squadron will train. So, 70-30. We can have the A5M4s run combat air patrol over here. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we do have F1 M2 Pete here. We do have Betty's, we have Nels. Nine in reserve. Okay, I'm going to tell you to stop sending that supply out there. I'm so very glad that we do have fuel arriving. V. Hayamoto is gonna. Well, Hayamoto? Haya, Hyundai. <laughs> Hayamoto is actually gonna head over here to track so you can actually load that additional fuel, which is what we want. We do want oilers. We do want some additional tankers in this area. It would be probably worth our while to send some pretty decent carrier. Uh, tankers at least. I mean, 19 knots is fantastic. But these are really worth a lot. They'd actually be, um, I'd say probably more useful being converted to oilers, but they'd probably be very, very handy for actually taking oil and fuel. Well, oil basically for the Dutch East Indies at high speed. Though it might be, I don't know, it's a difficult thing. Yeah, I mean, this is it. It would be an incredible thing. I think the first carrier and carrier battle we see is going to be the one that really decides a lot for days, weeks, months, years to come. Because the thing is, if we were able to inflict a blow upon the uh, allied forces, such as devastating their carriers, then psh, that that would open up so much. You'd imagine here. Yeah, you might wait for a one-on-one event or carrier battles. Well, this is it. This is it. I mean, 
<laughs> like these cruisers moving in here. Unless he's got fast transports, unless he's got actual troop transports of some nature, then Canton will survive. He might bombard it, but she'll survive. What I'm going to do is actually move these uh, search planes to Tarawa, which is good because we'll have the additional aviation support there so we can actually run in this area, the naval search continuously. I'm going to knock it down to about 20% rest. Actually, no, they're at 31 fatigue. Now, bump that shit out. But you do have the uh, aviation support here, which is fantastic. I'm not entirely sure about the discoloration. It came from actually uh, applying the upgrade. Are you using Hexless map or RR? Um, originally Hexless. I mean, this came from the uh, border upgrade, so I don't know where these lines have come from, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of just gone with it for the time being because I don't want to break it. But I'd ideally like the hexless map. Hmm. Okay. I think so far operations are proceeding uh, nicely. I think the fact that we provoked him here in this area is extremely interesting. And, um... It's interesting, actually. Now, the thing is, how do we actually respond to this? I don't want to actually go out here all guns blazing. I'm half tempted to take, potentially, the battleships from Kidubutai. If I was to dispatch, uh, at least Kirishima, potentially. Kirishima, Tone, and Jikuma. They could operate as a small task force. I mean, Kirishima's a Congo class. All oh, right. I mean, if you, um, I don't know if you'd be able to find the ones for Hexus, that'd be fantastic, mate. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. What do you guys think then potentially sending out Kirishima? I'd be somewhat, uh, reluctant to do so, but it is a potential option that we could do. All oh, right, okay. She's a bit lower on fuel, and obviously would take some AA away from Kibutai. Ah, oh, thank you very much, mate. That'd be appreciated. But obviously it's the big guns, but we do have two battleships over here. Um, we'll just after stream would be fine, no rush. Okay. So, I think what we'll do here then, I have them all. <laughs> right. I'm going to detach the uh, most heavily damaged carriers. So that would be Akagi and Zuikaku. Now Zuikaku, bar in this system damage, is actually fine. The other ones are okay. I mean, Shokaku could probably do with some he well, aid. I think what we'll do then... Uh, um, what do you guys think? Do we have Shokaku, Zuikaku, and Akagi? Let's see if we disband them. Well, this is it. It's how we respond. So what we'll do is we'll disband the task force in, uh, well, on the island. So you can see we have them here. So if I take a look at them. 14 days. Twenty-three days for Akagi. Zuikaku, 16 days. And we could set their priority up to critical. Seems the best I can manage is high. And honestly, if we were stood down, it's only 14 days. Repair ship. Hmm. Pierce side's 14 days. Right, cancel. We'll have you set to high. I need you on readiness. So 17 days here. Let's just see what uh, damage we can repair. If I can repair one point of damage, that'd be alright. If I can stop the smoke, I'd be happy. Eleven days. Fifteen days. Right. It's an option that we do have. I mean, of course, we'd still be able to have them um, transfer back in here. Ah, not 
Zui. Well, Zuikaku can, Akage can. But not Shokaku. Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll go for that then. Um, we'll see what damage we can actually repair. We still have three... Uh, uh, I think what I'm actually going to do is set some combat air patrol on these guys. Right, there's still 30% combat, uh, combat air patrol. Okay. So we'd still have 34 zeros. Maybe like 10, I don't know what the hell 30% of 34 would be. Right. We do have 24 A5 and 4s over here. They're currently running Escort. And Combat Air Patrol. What we'll do then is we'll run 8% Combat Air Patrol. But I'll run it over... The Island. Or rather, the actual Kiributai. <laughs> Bind to the island, then. So we'll run uh, long range combat patrol, I guess. Hmm. Wasn't complaining about it being on combat patrol, but I'll, long, I'll run long range combat patrol. Yeah, that's true. With torpedoes, definitely. I mean, this is uh, this is it. We have the additional patrol planes here now. Well, flying boats back over here towards Tarawa. Uh, not many of them really did make it. But we still have a fair few over here. So that's like 14. Quite a few unready. Yeah. But we do have uh, aviation support heading towards the island. Yeah, thousands of ships are on the island. I think it's going to be interesting. I think what we need to do is work out our response to this. Do we actually have any forces intercept them? Or do we just play... I suppose this is it. I think at the end of the day, I think the best choice here is not to bite. I don't think it's worth biting. What we will do is send submarines to the area. Beyond that, we won't move. We won't take that bait. So make for Canton. You'll have fuel enough to reach the area. And by the time, I mean, depending on how fast they're moving, I think they're going to head to Canton. I think that's probably what he's going to do. The thing is, if he takes Canton back, then sure, why why not? We have nothing on the island. We have nothing to lose. Well, we have, like, what, two planes to lose. Fair enough. They could have been moved out. We knew that was going to happen. We can forgive that. It has revealed their presence, though. It has revealed allied ships in the area. Yeah, I want six eight needs fuel. You're heading down here too. Okay, so we have four submarines making uh, top speed towards Canton. That's good news. Four submarines is directly outside Fiji. So the thing is, really. Oh, the maps really do make the game. You definitely need to have the better maps. They are beautiful. But yeah, the thing is really here. Rather than stop us at Savai, he's chosen not to do that. Which means we actually do have our forces now in place within Savai. What we're going to do here then, is we are going to take our forces here. Well, our search plane here. Do I not have you? Where the fuck are you? Do I just have one in reserve? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what's going on here. Uh, but okay. Whatever. If, if you're alive, then if you'd like to do me group currently out of range. Are you even alive? I don't think he's alive. <laughs> God knows on that one. Okay, what we're going to do then is go back to naval search. Search. 
Though, uh, might be worthwhile to keep on building up that detection over here. Though it's not saying I've got a detection, I've only got one plane flying over every now and then, haven't I? Right, need to just run mission speed. If I run crew speed, I'd be interested. Um, I'm using the pure map mod. Yeah, the Topo map project pure. That's it. Yeah, that makes sense. Shame, shame. Honestly, thought he might have been some kind of vampire. Sup there, swordfish? How you doing, my man? So if the vine has fallen, but we do see allied ships over here, and we do see potentially four heavy cruisers over here. Yeah, send it back to port to get a new plane and a new pilot. Now okay, let's go over to truck actually. Right, um, let's see. <laughs> I'm using whatever it is. <laughs> oh yeah, Pure has no roads and railroads, that's right. Right, what do we have here? Uh, I need to see aviation support at Royal Wow, bang on the money. Uh, Singapore, not much change. Tian down. Um, I'm playing against the historical gamer. Um, China's been alright for us, actually. We'll take a look shortly. I'm just going to just uh, decide something here. I need to update that, uh, update that every now and then. Right, um, I'll have them land over here. Wait, I like my gold drive? Fuck knows what's in there. I think it's just random stuff, really. I, I hope you can't see everything else in there. It's half of your awkward. I think I have some documents in there. Okay, they're training. Ah, uh, see, the thing is with that one of these series, it's just the fact that uh, it got to the point where there wasn't a challenge. Yeah, I need to take that down and update it. Okay. Why am I looking at side pattern? Right, the A5 then falls. Eighty twenty. All right, fantastic. <clears throat> okay, so we do have then over the island. Uh, we'll have. Yeah, Shokaku can't be moved here at the moment. Shokaku will be available in one day. Interesting. But, we take a look at this. Oh, she could actually, um, 10 days at critical. Interesting. Might be able to get a little bit more out of this. Still 15. Akagi. 20 days at critical. That's what we need. If I can send any repair ships, I will, I would be better off sending them here. That'd be nice. Right, Ondo. Return to port, yes. You'll be needed in the future. Right, so we currently have 6,699 tons there. 13,000 tons coming in. We have here on the island 5,395 tons to unload. Uh, there's also just over 5,000 tons of fuel. Well, units. Well, 
Right, we do have the additional heavy cruiser here. Need to be careful about speed. Uh, we have our Haguro uh, heavy cruiser and the Chutovs, Chutovs uh, seaplane carrier. Which is great, she's carrying with her. Well, how many planes do we have on board? Yeah, so she's carrying 21 float planes, which is fantastic. What I'm going to do here then is take, let's see. Right. Have you had over here? So that's auxiliary uh, destroyer tender, and then we do have the aircraft tender. Which is carrying at the moment zero planes. Yeah, you need to come here. I need that fuel. Fuel's desperately needed down here. I mean, obviously, Kiributai's drank a lot of that up. We do have a lot of it being drunk up right now. I'm really glad that we did send fuel convoys in the in the weeks before, in the days and weeks before, because obviously that's definitely paying uh, paying off right now. Otherwise, it would have been really difficult. Mm. Right. Let's take a look at these aircraft, actually. Did you just upgrade? I wonder if you've just upgraded. Yeah, I need to actually add those, don't I? None of supply in Guam. But there's enough here at Saipan, however. Hmm. Need a uh, field level seven. Making it hard on me. Well, that's good then. So we can definitely upgrade them over here. So we'll transfer them from Saipan and Guam down here. Midget submarines and uh, frogmen port attack. <laughs> I wish. Right, free aircraft here. They've got a lot to actually cover. And the war's going interestingly. We did take some losses off uh, Malaya, but really, other than that, we have a fairly typical ca uh, Japanese campaign, really. We are. I don't know, it's an interesting question. It's one of those that is really going to be answered in the future. Right, we are seeing 6,336 troops, 15,000 here. He might have actually abandoned his base here. See those troops being bombarded. Ah, so the war area has survived. Did I see a deliberate battle here? Or did that not actually happen between the 15th Division? So I feel that should have happened. I'm sure that should have happened. Did that not happen? Let me tango this. It didn't happen. Why did it not happen? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I know you want me to say the Dutch East Indies. I mean, it's like, um, obviously, we were too slow over here with Mersing. Had we, um, well, this is it. Had I really understood what I understand now, at that point, obviously, we wouldn't have done that and we would have had this going along. We would have additional forces. Uh, we might have tried to do it in a smarter way. Hmm. But yeah, we've had some good success over here. I mean, with Midway falling, at least that scenario, well, that's been worked out. I mean, we are really pushing here. But the thing is, he's responded, which is fantastic. 
I think what we'll do then is we'll have our cruisers come together. I don't think it's worthwhile to actually waste the fuel. So, question is which island do we head to? I might head back to Tarawa. I may remain in station over here. It's hard to say because the thing is, I don't want to be too close, but I want to be close enough where I could potentially take advantage. Now, the thing is, I do also have on board two float planes, which does give us valuable information. Um, yeah, Wazuki. Uh, not like having too much in the way of fuel. Right, that has reduced short range. Okay, what we're going to do here then is we'll meet our task force here. Merge. We're not going to head to Canton. We're instead going to head back towards Tarawa. We need fuel. We also need further information. Hmm. Wow. Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the uh, Rosen Railway version. That makes sense. But yeah, we're going to have the heavy cruisers head back. So Araki's Gambit and Takahashi's Gambit are going to head back towards Tarawa. What we're going to do then is we can see this force is moving west. Hmm. Can I rebase any additional H6K forge yet? No. Ah, oh, it's a shame. I wish I could have them out there. I might have the ones over here at Kagoshima that just run random. Yeah, I'll have them run random. At least then we'll have information about here as well. It's interesting because it has reported two submarines sank over here, but I don't really believe that. We inflicted damage, which is good news. Right, interestingly enough, we aren't seeing that heavy cruiser anymore. I think the way to run here is then back towards Saigon. If we can try... I mean, these forces over here would probably be the ones that we damaged. So I think what we need to do then is have our patrol boats really focus in on, like, one or two. And take them out. If we can take them out, that'd be really, really good. Take this of one over here. Uh, no, we can't do kamikaze attacks until like 1944. I think there's a certain number of things that have to be met as well. It's like either they have to be within about 14 or 15 hexes of Saigon, or they have to be within so many hexes of Japan, or a Japanese base of uh, some nature. So it's not until 1944. But what we're going to do here is we're going to focus our assets on trying to take down these submarines. I think we'll head back to Saigon, and then if we can actually destroy some submarines in this area, then that'd be good for us. Right. We'll widen this arc here. Hmm. 
Yeah, we've had these submarines over here. Unfortunately, they did torpedo the heavy cruiser Maya uh, in one of the previous turns. Though she did make it over here, so she'll be okay. She's not on fire, which is fine. She stood down. She'll be here for a while. But that's fine. Once uh, activity dies down in this area, we can actually look at moving her. Uh, the good news is we'll be able to reduce that damage to 47, which is still not as bad as 58, so that's alright. Then have her moved into Saigon, where we do have the repair shipyard. Okay. Right, some rings are moving in over here. Now then. I need an airfield here ASAP. I'm going to start building the fortifications and focus on the airfield. We only have 23... Sorry, we only have 4 engineers here. <laughs> right. I am going to take these additional forces here. Yeah. I'll take these two, sorry, three patrol boats, and I think the cruiser, no, I'm going to leave you behind. No, I'll do I. Hmm. Yeah, we'll take you. You do have some AA. Fuck it, we'll take both of them. Right. Loading has been completed. What I'm doing here is I'm going to take the additional troops down uh, here. See, so the thing is I could potentially land the 144 for Rebel, but I'm not going to do that, especially without support. And we do need to be mindful of this area here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these forces actually head towards uh, the island over here. Direct path. The reason for that is we'll actually begin to build up our troop numbers here. So even should he actually reinforce, we'll have options, which is what we want. Okay, so they're not going to be ready for a couple of days then. How long? Two will be ready in a day, one day later, and another one two days later. Right, transfer to truck if you can make it. Too far. We need to transfer additional flow planes to the area. Right. Pending. Right, you're loading. I think it's a very interesting, uh, interesting move he's pulling off there. Uh, right, they're loading, so that's all that matters. Or are they? Why is it pending? It shouldn't be pending. Well, this is going to start. Alright, now we can start.
Except, there we go. Well, that's it. Are they being sent as uh, advanced reconnaissance? Potentially so. Well, the thing is, should they continue to head towards the west, then uh, that's going to really, really open up some additional options for us. I mean, should he... I don't know. I think he's seeking to bring battle to the area in some shape or form. But even if he isn't, sending these carriers out here, he n must know that is a risk. There is a risk attached to this. Even if we don't catch them, we know about them now. There's still an additional two ships there, so we'll have to see really what goes on. But it's a very intriguing response, and I'm very happy. I mean, sure, we'll lose two planes here, but the fact is, uh, in some ways it's actually quite good, because he'll be able to see the, the aircraft there. He might see the numbers drop, it depends really on his detection level, but he'll still see aircraft there. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting move. I do wonder. There's a lot going on here. I love it. Absolutely love it. Is it bait? Well, this is it. This is why we're not going to take it. Because it very well could be bait. We don't have a huge amount of fuel right now. We've uh, refueled Kitabutai. But Kitabutai is not entirely ready for action right now. She could, at a, moment, a moment's notice, go for combat. But I'd rather go with everybody and I'd rather see what uh, damage I could replace. Well, uh, repair at Talawa. Even a single point of damage would make a difference. And it does give our forces time just to have a little bit of training, a little bit of R&R. &R, which is what we need. Uh, we'll gain some fuel back as well next time. We'll have our operational points as well as what we need. Ideally, we'll have full operational points to be able to move. And this is it. It's like in a turn. So, for example, I'm not going to do it, of course, but... Um, well, that's Tarawa. Well, the thing is, it's like at Tarawa. Let's see. Do I not have anything here that could... Um, I guess not. Yeah, I need to be very mindful about the security here. I'd love to transfer some fighters. What I am going to do then is... Let's see. Okay, I'm going to transfer the Shokaku squadron. Yeah, no, it really is quite nice. Right, transfer you here. What I'm going to do then is uh, turn that rest down to 30%. I'm going to have 70% of the squadron on long-range combat air patrol. In fact, I'm going to go with 80%. Yeah, 80%. I'm going to have 80% of the uh, squadron here. Uh, too far. Fuck. Is it too far? Ah. I assume that, that should be within range, surely. Why aren't they ready? Ah, uh, so we need to have a day of repair then. Okay. Well, fuck. Well, tomorrow they'll be ready. Yeah, that's irritating. Hmm. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Interesting that they... Uh, well, that's fine. It's not really, but... Oh well. What we might do then is have the Komori. Rather than heading to Tarawa, head over here. Okay. I could drop the uh, destroyer tender to make a knot, see if it would make a knot of speed. Well, additional hex would be nice. Yeah, he's got to be doing something. Three hexes, okay. That's fine. Right, represents unloaded via cranes. That's fine. Mission speed, mission speed, full speed. 
Then again, even on mission speed, you're still making the same progress. You do make a bit of difference. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I think we'll... Con well, then again. We'll run at mission speed. I lose one hex, but we do hold on to a lot more fuel. We'll have fuel come in from the ships, actually. So we can cannibalize it if needed. Hmm. What I'm going to do is actually tell them to run random, I think. Yeah, don't worry, we're not going to run fuel. Uh, run full long. Uh. Right, what I'm going to do here is drop the amount of search, I think. And turn it to random. So we'll run 30% search. So obviously they'll search within this uh, 360 area. So we did see things over here as well. But I think if we run uh, random, then at least we do have a chance to respond to threats from multiple angles of attack, which is always a good thing. Now, what I'm thinking here is potentially... Let's see... I could send them to Tarawa. What I'm thinking here is potentially sending the Jakes to Tarawa, because that gives us additional float planes in the area. Well, I think I'd do that possibly turn after, or two days. Maybe a day or two days uh, from now. Could have them sent down there. We could have them sent to Tarawa in preparation being sent to Fudafulti. Uh, which could be done. But we do have them over here at Savai now taking that role. I still want Fudafuti. The thing is, I could have had these forces still head on towards Baker Island, but I think it's far too risky at the moment in time. Too risky. We do have these ships heading still back over here, which is nice. I do need to guard them. Isokazi definitely needs some repair here as well. Fourteen days here. You want him to keep thinking where Kidabutai is. Well, he'll know where Kidabutai is. He knows where they are, which is obviously on the island now. Yeah. I did think he would be moving off. I did have a feeling he would do something like that. So fourteen days of readiness. Half that if you're stood down.
Hmm. Yeah, exactly. We need fuel here, definitely. <laughs> well, this is it. If he's expecting to see activity around here, then that would be rather interesting. We might actually be able to fool him then uh, into thinking that Savai was our only target. He may have been expecting additional uh, landings, and I imagine he'd been expecting them from this area. So if he's gonna, if he's gonna be a couple days, without landing forces i honestly think um and it's happened earlier than i would have predicted but i honestly think that he will be impatient and he will seek to actually take the uh, initiative therefore head north and we've seen that we saw a response to the landers at Savai. and i think honestly if we'd not arrived that day then i don't think we would have been able to take Savai. i think we would have been intercepted and destroyed at sea which would obviously set our plans back but with Savai under our control, it does mean we have an actual base in the area. To actually own a base in this area is incredibly important. It does give us a point to which base aircraft, which we're doing now. We'll have four H, uh, H6Ks, and you know what, I need to run them 100%. I know it's a lot of fatigue, but we need that information while we have it available to us right now. Because it might not last a single turn. Uh, but that information garnered here could be critical. I think he knows that. I think he definitely knows something is not working for him here. We know he's moving over here. So I think what we'll do then is we'll divert some of these submarines over here. These tankers over here would be amazing targets. If we could actually remove three tankers here, that'd be great. Interestingly, they're moving west. Everything's moving west besides these guys. Which I find interesting. Hmm. Oh, this is it. I mean, should Fiji fall? Which it will do. I think we're still looking at operational date of the 30th of December uh, to really kickstart things. I am worried about Tarawa. That's my little worry there in terms of air. But then again, um, let's see. What's the distance here? It's 27 hexes to Tarawa. Even uh, even if he had carriers, he'd still have to be at least this close to launch an air attack on Talawa. So I don't think we need to worry about that yet. We will have our carriers ready by that time. Assuming there is carriers coming. They could approach from another angle. We are aware of potential activity over here. If we consult our signal intelligence, we are seeing transmission San Diego. Canes, cards, whatever the hell that is. Which is actually Australia. It is Australia, yeah. Hmm. And Pago Pago. So there's definitely something here at Pago Pago. Yeah, very interesting. But there's a lot of activity currently over here at Ceylon. The good news is we do have... I mean, the thing is, I could potentially run an air raid on Rangoon if we wanted to. That might be worthwhile. But we are running naval attack. Or at least naval search in the Andaman Sea. So should he seek to actually surprise us by bringing a carrier this way, he would be rather surprised by our own response, I'd say. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, we'll see a second division land here now, which is going to be great. Yep, yeah, have you marched towards Lucina? Now, we do have an option here. Let's take a look at these forces. We could march directly onto uh, Manila, which I honestly think I will do. Right, fatigue is up there. Question is, guys, do we let that fatigue stop us or do we make our move? It depends, really. Uh, we could have a day just to recover and then march. We don't lose anything from a day. Well, we'd... 
Well, it's one of these, isn't it? I think I'd rather wait a day, I'd, uh, I'd say. It would mean that probably within a day, we might have the entirety of the 33rd unloaded. And we'll have a division here. So it's one of these things of we don't have to attack Manila with uh, a smaller force. We could attack it in full force. And I'm rather surprised he's not known about this. I did think he would have uh, seen it coming, but it seems he hasn't. So Task Force 42, we might be able to find out. But you take a look at all these destroyers. We might even earmark some of these destroyers to head into the Pacific. I mean, this one's amazing. Tatsuta Maru. Really good ship. Could any of them be... Yeah, we did suffer a collision here to the Argentina Maru. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Wait a day and then march. At least then we have the ability to recover. We'll have some pretty good planning for Manila as well. Which is good. Yeah, go full force. Welcome Van James. The lucky thing is, it seems like uh, his armored fighting vehicles have been forced over here to Mauban, which is not great for him. We still have our forces over here, so the Canada Detachment still march in to meet the... Which is this Tano, uh, Tanaka Detachment here. Uh, so we'll have these forces ready then. Obviously get them some time to recover. So we'll be able to hit the base here, hit Manila, hit this base. I could, I could hit Mauban. The Camino Detachment. Yeah, we'll have the Camino uh, Detachment hit my band, so we can have them rest. Yeah, Stampede Rides. <laughs> Stampede Rides on Rhinos. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, I should have an engineer in force moving. Arrive right, Naval Construction is marched north to Lager. A little bit of manpower there. Okay, but I think this is where we're going to call it for tonight. So I'd love to know what you guys think. See, I could actually take some of the destroyers out here and have them escort the 146 in. Because they are moving into a dangerous area. If I move them there. And let's see. Yeah, we just need them, and then we'd be able to reform the 56th Division. Which would be awesome, because we could then take the 56th Division, or the 56th, and have them sent somewhere else around here. But the good news is we'll see landings. Ideally landings over here at Brunei. These APDs could actually land ahead of time. Yeah, they could do that. I don't know if there's actually any forces here, but they could potentially do it. Or I could even have one of these APDs land elsewhere. Right, I'm gonna have you... I mean, these are actually nice ships. They do have some fairly good, um, well, decent amounts of fuel. So what we'll do is we'll have that force disband for the time being. The cruiser mine layer. Yeah, she's in port. Jesus, that's a long time. Just repair her as you can. She's obviously highly damaged. I need supply here. I do have a few tankers here as well as the uh, oiler. <laughs> Indeed. Right, we'll take a look at where we can send these uh, cargo ships to, t well, to pick up some supply. I could potentially pick up some supply from Hong Kong. We only have 12,000 of those, probably not. Okay. So, yes, until next time, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have definitely enjoyed this. Ah, good, our riveting transportation has arrived over here. That's what I like to see. Right, you're currently unloading here, so cancel. Low troops.
Yeah, those tanks will haul um, haul oil from Miri to the Nippon Islands. Yeah. Cannot all. Well, all we need here then is just the actual troop transport. Even she might not be able to dock. She is 7,350 tons. Yeah, she can dock. Mm, I'm still not seeing anything here. Restricted, okay. Hmm. Okay, but we'll leave that until next time. So thank you so very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you have enjoyed this. And if you have, please do consider supporting myself on the channel. And of course, join the Discord. It really does make a massive difference. And until that time in the future, which I stream again, probably tomorrow. I'll see you there. Goodbye for now, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great night, evening, day, whatever. And as per usual, I'm terrible outros. Goodbye for now.